The following is intended for mature audiences only. Welcome to the news from La La Land Podcast. Yeah! Hello and welcome to the news from La La Land where tonight three siblings with a strange and sheltered past share their story through pop culture, philosophy, and creative nonsense. That's right, I'm your host, Sarah, here with my brother, Nick, but tonight is a special sisters edition with a special Ooh. guest, Steph Sokol. Hello. Student of philosophy, general free spirit, and lover of life, right? <laughs> that is Based true. Based on your am... D&D character, I think that's accurate. <laughs> I am deeply and profoundly in love with life. Yes. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and giving us, a, giving us a chance to do that super cute intro because that was just adorable. Yeah. And now that there's three of us, there's no going back. <laughs> I can tell you've been waiting to do that for a long time. Yeah. Adorable. Just like Steph. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to get a really uh, a, a a big uh, big sibling vibe here because um, I think we might have mentioned earlier in the podcast that we have we grew up in a family of two sets of siblings and they're both what are we seven years apart yeah uh, seven eight years apart something like that how old are you do you mind I'm twenty seven never uh, <laughs> okay twenty seven I'm twenty one uh, I guess when you're under thirty it's not awkward to ask, no, no, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trick, though, is knowing when they're under thirty. Yeah, um, but well, I'm I don't know. It's it's, it's going to. There's a two year difference between you and our and our other sibling, whatever. In the seven to nine year range uh, apart, <laughs> somewhere between five and twenty years. Yeah, we're far apart basically, but we were still like close. I feel like. Yeah, definitely. We still had so many bonding experiences. We got along really well as a family, but there are some. I would say it's just a far enough apart that we were. Uh, different enough to have really kind of different levels of shelteredness, different uh, media exposure. Uh, some th some things were significantly different about our childhoods. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, you know, we'll kind of delve into all that. But... Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot to unpack. There. Yeah, exactly. We'll kind of get into that into our pop culture moment. Pop culture moment. Oh, sorry. Was hey, that not the time? No or, previews. Was it not yet? God you damn it. Sick son of a <laughs> bitch. I've listened to enough of these to know that that's. I'm sorry, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Pop culture moment! Yeah. Yeah, I mean, something that was probably a significant part of your life was growing up in the same culture that we did, even though you had more exposure to some pop culture stuff. I'm talking. Yeah, totally. Um, growing up in the same culture you could probably just drop the chur right oh cult ah good yeah. one growing up with the same cult <laughs> sick religion burn but yes yes we did grow up in the same culture <laughs> <laughs> and i actually think that our experiences of that were similar in key ways and differed in key ways yes. that intersect with a lot of different things so again a lot to unpack Everybody got her gender wrong. So growing up in an extremely conservative and uh, religious environment, obviously there are some some things there that are going to make that feel really different. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, one thing was uh, I, that was just sort of especially important, I think, was that um, I didn't relate a lot to boys who were my age, but the church that we went to was very segregated, I would say, along the lines of gender. Yeah, because, like, if you mix too much, you might <laughs> sin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a, a tricky sin to recover from. Well, you're, you're not even talking about the sin of, uh, you know, mating with the wrong person and accidentally, you know. Oh, no. We're talking about this thought crimes here. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about thought crimes. You might accidentally look at the ass of the woman in front of you in the next row. <laughs> And uh, so that's why it's really important to separate them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. But um, that wasn't why I wanted to be around girls more. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they all had lovely butts, but I kind of just wanted to be friends with them. 
kind of just like not being able to relate to the people that I was supposed to be spending most of my time with. I think that's probably the only major way that that was sort of impacted by religion. Hmm. Yeah. That and trans people not being exactly well uh, covered as a subject at, at church. And when they were, it was usually like, these dang transsexuals are going to take over the world. Were, were, oh. Yeah, were they even acknowledged? I, I don't remember a trans issue is ever even being acknowledged in a sermon uh i think no i don't think it was at a sermon i think it was just our parents on like religious grounds oh oh just because people in conversation yeah. yeah there's just not a lot of exposure to the concept in that culture i mean no one really knows what they're talking about when when they use those words like there's just no concept there oh yeah definitely i'm, I'm still learning like um a uh, habit I've started developing recently is I've started trying to not assume people's genders. So I'll just call people they or them automatically hmm. until they sort of confirm it somehow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's getting more and more common. Like, I just started working at a government job. And whenever people introduce themselves, you're supposed to say, like, either what pronouns you prefer when you're introducing yourself or... Just say they, them, or... That's cool that you have that culture there. I mean, I'm like, I, I think it would be awesome if we got to a point where, like... So so if I'm making that calculus of, you know, whether or not to assume someone's gender based on how they look, it's the, it's the question of, are they more likely to be... Is this someone who's more likely to be offended by the fact that you... Someone might get this and, like, what, you can't tell that I'm a guy or, you know... There's, there's there's people that will be offended by that too. Maybe I just shouldn't care about that. But. Well, that's that's why I sort of use it in a blanket way. So I'm not like doing it to one specific person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I heard recently about a person at my my new job who was uh, <laughs> who had been given like an extensive HR training, but then when they answered the phone, they were taking down some demographic information, and they just said, "You sound white. Are you white?" Really. <laughs> Yeah, so like you gotta be careful about being <laughs> inclusive in a way that's still making assumptions. Oh <laughs> you look non-binary, are you? <laughs> wow. Well, Steph, I think the the thing that everyone is really dying to know here uh, about about being trans is, and, and uh, we should say that you are married to a lovely woman who we all who we all love. And um, yes, I'm what they call a transbian. Yes, which is awesome. <laughs> And, um, of course, you have been a woman all of your life. Um, only some of us are just now realizing that. So how long has she been a lesbian then? Oh, yeah, it's it's an ongoing conversation, actually. it's I mean, it's clearly one of those sort of fluid adapting things. You know, you're never as rigid as you think you are. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Humans are so adaptable. It's incredible. Especially if there's a binding force there, like love. Love, a binding force. Kinky. Yeah, it surrounds us. It penetrates us. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like that's from Star Wars talking about the force? It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, definitely. <laughs> the force has always been penetrating like a, like a lightsaber. That would explain why Anakin doesn't like sand. <laughs> It's coarse, and it gets everywhere. <laughs> Not smooth like your skin. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of that, maybe we should segue into talking about pop culture? Sure. Absolutely. All right. A da -da pop culture moment. So, uh, we were born, you know, as we were discussing earlier, a few years apart. We had different childhoods. You, do you feel like you were restricted from pop culture in a similar way that we were, or simply by preference? Or um, So I think that uh, we might disagree here, just based on uh, what Nick was saying at the beginning, because I feel like compared to you, it looks like I was less sheltered, because I definitely got access to movies and uh, TV and things like that that you guys didn't have. And, I don't know, I just feel like I got generally more exposure. Like, I got a smartphone when I was 16, which was late for my generation. <laughs> and, um, but the thing is, I wasn't sheltered by the standards that you guys would have had growing up, of, like, the things that you should have known about, but I was sheltered by the standards of what I should have known about, given that few-year gap. Mm, I see. So you had more media exposure 
than we did, but you still felt behind by the standards of your own generation. Like you were barely catching up with the things that we should have known in the 90s. Yeah. And everybody else in your generation was like already doing TikTok. <laughs> I, I think it would have been musically at that point. Musically. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, all the people from Musical.ly wound up going over onto TikTok. Oh. Well, I guess I missed that one. Yeah, you have to know your history. You have to watch the diss videos. <laughs> like, who diss? Well, I mean, like, that's the thing, is like, I got to go to Blockbuster and choose movies at regular intervals throughout the week, which was probably a slightly different experience from what you guys had. Yeah, it's funny how outdated the concept of even going to Blockbuster and picking out movies now seems. I kind of miss it, to be honest. Hmm. I, it's it is kind of fun, like the ritual. Yeah, I, I don't want to be right? one of those vinyl only hipster people with VHSs and DVDs. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, like you watched a lot of when you were little, little. You watched a lot of like Roy Rogers and stuff, yeah, right? yeah. I have like a ridiculously those like old yeah. Cowboy. I have an extensive catalog of Western movie references. I, I realized that especially recently watching, um, oh, what's the Redemption movie by Tarantino? Or, no. No, the, the Revenge one with the, the slave, the escaped slave. Django Unchained? Yeah, Django oh. Unchained, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, I was watching it and I realized, like, down to the way they zoom in on characters' faces and stuff, I recognize them all as tropes from really old westerns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just felt like I had a, a deeper appreciation as a result of that. But... Yeah, I, I feel like I got all the media you guys wished you got, but not the media I would have wished that I would be getting. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, interesting. Absolutely. I, I feel like it's a, been a really weird shift with, you know, social media and smartphones and things like that. Like, Gen Z is driving Gen Z pop culture in a way I don't think previous generations have as much. I mean, maybe you guys can speak to that, but like, just sort of... Uh, it feels like we're not responding to pop culture so much as creating pop culture. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned TikTok and stuff. Yeah, well, it's much it's much easier for you to like have access to information. Well, access to uh, to audience too. I think that's the thing. Like, and audience, yeah, it's easy to have a voice. Well, not easy, but you it's know. possible yeah. though in a way that it wasn't before. You can have young people making you know ridiculous amounts of money on TikTok and with an audience, you know, creating culture like you're talking about, Steph. Like it is, yeah, it, it is interesting. Are younger people creating more of the culture now than in the than ever in the past? I I would believe it. Do you feel like if you had sort of grown up in that creator world, you would have been like a personality? Um no. I don't think so. I, I kind of agree with um Bill Burnham on this one. He thinks that the whole uh, paradigm of everyone suddenly being both the entertainer and the audience is probably incredibly unhealthy and it's going to lead to a lot of unhealthy outcomes <laughs> like narcissism and, mm. you know, a lack of empathy. Oh no, like here we are. Three narcissists. <laughs> well, Steph, didn't we both just read that Hank Green book recently? Uh, an, an absolutely remarkable thing. Yeah, yeah, about all the... Uh, the problems of social media and fame and stuff. Yeah, that's all, that's just like literally about a girl who like decides that she's, well, I mean, there's a side plot where she makes first contact with aliens and stuff, but really it's about <laughs> how she uh, decides to like make herself a brand on social media and like how stressful and all consuming it becomes to like become this character. Literally yeah. consuming. Yeah, because she like actually starts to become her brand rather than it just being a thing she made it, she started turning into it sounds like a korean drama romance oh, they're really? always doing plots like yeah. that <laughs> so just kind of like soap opera stuff yeah but with music huh. awesome <laughs> uh but yeah i mean what finally sort of got me into the stream of pop culture more i think was meeting um my my now wife masha uh, this was long before I was out as anything or had any real engagement in, in pop culture, current pop culture to speak of. Uh, and she totally different, had like newest technology from, you know, right when it came out and 
you know, was public schooled, so knew all of the, the memes and slang and popular music and things yeah. like that. And she sort of mm. taught you all of those, yeah. like, little games and tricks and, like, dirty little jokes. Yeah, she and her best <laughs> friend and I became, like, a really close little triangle of friends. And uh, they introduced yeah. me to a lot of music. That was kind of the first first way I had into pop culture. It was, like, I remember they sent me Drake. They asked me if I knew who Drake was, and I didn't. Because huh. I only listen to classical music. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I remember those days. Oh. Well, now that makes me wonder how much of your uh, your sheltering, and I wonder if this about myself sometimes too, was imposed from above and how much of it was just like, that's who we were because that's what we knew about. Like, I, well, yeah. young me yeah. chose to listen to classical music. That's what I liked, you know? Yeah. But I mean... It's interesting to ask why I liked it and not other things. Mm, sure. You didn't have hip, cool friends around being like, have you checked out the new Drake TikTok? Or whatever. Ah, yes, the new Drake TikTok. What? Watch the new Drake TikTok on my Instagram story. <laughs> Nick, I'm what sorry. is your problem? <laughs> Do you want me to talk about rap now? <laughs> yeah, tell us about the raps. Yeah, is Drake a rapper technically? Because he's sort of singing, right? I, I don't know. I don't like Drake. <laughs> he used to call me on his cell phone. <laughs> Sorry, oh. that was... <laughs> yeah, exactly that one. Has a melody. You can sing it. He used to call me on my cell phone. Late night when you Yeah, that doesn't sound like rap to me. But I don't know. Steph, what is rap? Uh, I mean, there are people who have the same argument about 21 Pilots. Because... They rap frequently, but they're definitely not a rap group. Mm. They're more like a rock band than anything else. Okay, Steph, I think, yeah. uh, I know you You didn't want me to ask you about rap today in the, in the little pre-recorded <laughs> no, discussion <laughs> because you're not, because you don't consider yourself a rap expert. But let me tell you about what my rap exposure was as a kid, was dad making fun of rap. He had this little thing that he, and anytime somebody drove by, like in a car with the window down, playing the music really loud, he would kind of make fun of it with um, some kind of probably very inappropriate. No, no, he was always very racially sensitive. <laughs> a, attempt at a, at, a, at a gang sign, and he would be like, ha, I am stupid and my music is stupider. <laughs> ha! There was always a ha in there. And then wouldn't we continue it and be like, Eat a pot of beans and fat yeah. my way to Jupiter. Why did you just do it like a Boston <laughs> yeah. Eat a pot of beans and fat my way to Jupiter. Eat a pot and fat my way to Jupiter. Fat my way to fucking Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go to fucking Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, fat your way there. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, yeah, that's. I mean, so that was my rap exposure, and so. I I grew up with rap being openly ridiculed as like non musical and a yeah, crude I mean, so did art I, form, and uh, and then and then so and then here you are listening to Drake as speed Drake rapping. does, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing: is I had this um this thing uh, right up until I stopped being religious, which was when I was almost eighteen. I was still seventeen, um, but anytime I uh, heard a swear word and you would be amazed how low my margins like but <laughs> warranted warranted this dang and butt and things like that even darn i had a problem with because it was a substitute swear word in my opinion and mm -hmm. i i would uh, cross myself so like yeah anytime i heard a swear word we talked about this in our last we episode just, actually yeah we just talked about this but it's cool that because we weren't there a lot of the time, we didn't live together for most of the time when you were that age. I mean, age. we knew that you were that you were experiencing modern movies and stuff like that. I just assumed that you were kind of a degenerate <laughs> and had not been <laughs> crossing yourself appropriately uh, to swear. I did not assume that. No, okay. <laughs> I don't know how... I, I know you guys have done very sexual episodes. I don't know how blue you want to get on this one. Get sexual, baby. This is already for oh, adults. Gross. Okay. <laughs> So we did. I, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna say this here. We did a sex episode early on in the podcast, and uh, listening back to that now, uh, I'm embarrassed by the level of <laughs> discomfort that I obviously have still talking about sex, which is funny because 
we were just talking about how we're supposed to be a sex positive podcast. But and all I that, also but... there may be a layer of it is that we're siblings. Yeah, sure. And we're on a podcast, which also feels a little bit vulnerable because you're talking to a large group. So it's like, yeah, well, maybe it wasn't, you know, full anal fisting. Oh, maybe it yeah. was just, you know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> do you guys want to hear me talk about porn? Uh, yeah. God damn it. Yes. <laughs> Share your porn preferences. Okay. No, no, so, no, I'm not going to be telling you about my current porn preferences. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, when I was growing up, like, I had plenty of internet access, probably more than you guys did. And I got curious about things, and I found porn, and not a great resource <laughs> for sex ed, but probably our best one that we had available to us. Hmm. And hey, romance novels aren't bad. <laughs> that's true. But that was mm -hmm. more of a youth thing. <laughs> but um, I, it got to a point where, like, right around the time where I was in my highest frenzy of crossing myself at swear words and, like, swearing I'd never drink alcohol and things like that, um, I still really wanted to watch porn. <laughs> but what oh. I would do is I would just, like, justify it all kinds of different ways. By like opening it in a different tab and then just listening to the audio of it, or like, <laughs> oh, you're not actually watching it then. Interesting yeah. loophole. Yeah, well, not really a loophole <laughs> though. That's the thing is like, when you you're still you... having the thoughts, and God cares about the thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but you're, why he would care about? Is it a sin of the flesh if you can't see the flesh though? Yeah. Or feel it. You're not seeing it or feeling it. <laughs> Plus, it's easier to ignore the faces that are just like fake smiles and empty eyes. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Maybe you could be um, just listening to like a workout video of some of some uh, like a girl oh, doing God. an exercise class. Then then minimize the window so you can't see it. But oh, then it kind of sounds Lord. like heavy breathing. Oh, and you can trick yourself into that you're listening to porn. <laughs> Frankly, I'm pretty sure that that uh, would have qualified as exactly the same sin. <laughs> <laughs> God won't know. <laughs> be like, and eh, there's Steph. Oh, girl on a treadmill looking for some uh, little motivation. <laughs> you get it. Get it. God, just like My daughter. A treadmill. <laughs> Of all the exercise equipment you could have picked, it's a treadmill, not like body weight exercises. Because you're hearing like <laughs> the that's time. the sound of the enormous mechanical dick going oh, into. The I don't know what kind of porn you were imagining. <laughs> <laughs> um, not that kind, of probably. There's always at least three motors in the best form. <laughs> oh my God. How did it's you true, railroad this into talking about horrifying porn again? <laughs> <laughs> did you have to use railroad into? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, should I have said ramroad into? <laughs> Rock me, mama, like a southbound train. Uh, my wife and I were just talking last, uh, tonight about how that song is about sex, and you made me think of it with the train thing. Is that kind of like the debate we used to have all the time with Dad, where we would say, Hello, stranger, put your love in hand in mine. We were like, that's definitely about a hooker. And he would always <laughs> insist, like, no, nah, no, nah, she's just reaching out to a friend for help. Oh my gosh. That explains why they let us listen to Emmy Lou Harris on road trips. <laughs> <laughs> they just yeah, didn't the intensely know. sexual Emmy Lou Harris. <laughs> yeah, pretty racy. Is she the one who also did that one about the um, gonna be a rider anyhow? Let me be a rider now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Another really? song about sex, in my opinion. But everything is about sex. All the best things. <laughs> so, I mean, we talked about this for us it was porn and. Hopefully, someday we'll hear from the audience about what their first sexual experience was. <laughs> but... No, we've made it clear <laughs> that we didn't want that, and that we will reiterate now, this is not what we want. Um, everyone in the audience, I'd like to know, what's your favorite category of porn? From NPR National Public Radio, it's porn hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh. In a world. <laughs> <laughs> Where everything sexual has been normalized. Where all mountains have nipples carved in the peaks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I love your NPR voice. <laughs> NPR. NWPR.org. Well, Steph, I mean, you have amazingly diverse musical interests now. I do. Do you want to share some of your, like, favorite musicians in the in the running right now? I know you sort of devote a lot of hours to just listening to music sometimes. I do, yeah. I Like you say, I try to stay diverse. Um, I guess I could just search by artists. I've been building this massive playlist that's got, like, 400 songs on it by this point. Um, and growing of all of my favorite music as I find it. And I could just search up names that I think are probably my top picks and see how many of their songs I have on that playlist. Probably Jacob Collier, Dodie. Nice. Um, Stevie Wonder is definitely way up there. Oh, yeah. And also Prince, but that one was more recent, actually. I love Prince. As you should. Prince is amazing. Nick still hasn't discovered the wonder of Prince, I don't think. I know. It's horrible. We talked about Purple Rain on here, and I promised myself I was going to go give it a close listen, and then I just haven't got around to it yet. Purple Rain, Purple Rain. So, Steph, it's already very clear, is a Sokol. She's proven it through and through. But just to prove it further, we're going to sort of head into a... Sokolism of the day. Sokolism of the day. Okay, I did it. I listened to Purple Rain, and it was awesome. <laughs> Good. <laughs> cool. Epic. I mean, that's like the definition of an epic song. It was cool. Yeah. Well, you should watch some of his more sexual ones later. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it really, it made me want to like turn the lights out and like turn it on a disco ball and just like spin in a circle in my living room. Yeah. I bet your kids yeah. would like dancing to it in the dark. I bet they would. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. So yeah, Sokolism of the day. I think today we're, you know, you already have heard a lot of our stories, Nick and I, we've talked ourselves to death. Steph, we want to focus on you and your Sokolness. Okay. Yeah, share some of your favorite, maybe childhood stories, or we talk about dad a lot. It could be dad stories because he was so eccentric. Mm. Um, if you have a poem you could share because Nick sh shares his poems all the time. We need to have a lady's voice in the podcast for <laughs> once, and I'm not a poet, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, I... Uh... I do have a lot of childhood memories, but I don't know that I have any that I would describe as so intensely Sokolish as the stories I have about dad. Yeah, that's kind of what it is, what boils down to, right? Yeah. Well, it's always just like, there's so many great dad stories and we, I'm sure you probably remember different ones than we do, but that is kind of like, he was the, the quintessential Sokol in our family that spawned <laughs> all the rest of the Sokolness. And so we end up, and there's so many stories, like, why not just tell another one? What you, what you got? All right. So I'll tell a dad story. And then, uh, if you think there's time, I'll tell a me story too. Yeah. There's always <laughs> yes, time. Definitely. All right. So my dad's story is of when dad wanted to build a house out on an island in the middle of a river. And, uh, he had found this giant log that was going to be sufficient or almost sufficient to get across the water. Problem is, he wanted to keep his feet dry, and if he used it as it was, you know, one side was not going to be firmly on the opposite shore. And so he had he had no way of, you know, lengthening the log. Obviously, he, he didn't know what to do. And a friend came by and very cryptically said, Tripods, Johnny. Tripods. <laughs> and he would say that all the time. Um... <laughs> But uh, my dad took a long time, or our dad took a long time to get it, and uh, when he did, he finally set up, you know, three sticks all tied together in a tripod and put the log up on top of those, so uh, it sat in the water. Uh, uh, but the part of the story I only learned recently is they wanted a removable bridge, because I, I don't want to, to slander, and this may not be exactly accurate. But I'm pretty sure that's the island he lived on where he grew the community's weed. <laughs> no way, oh, really? Oh, Mr. Weed is worse than alcohol <laughs> suddenly shows his true color. Oh, yeah, definitely. No, this is why we needed you to tell a story, Steph, because 
you experienced dad at a later point in life a little bit where yeah. he was loosening up a little and getting ready to like unveil more of the details <laughs> of these stories that we didn't get. <laughs> oh yeah, as a result, I have some really uncomfortable details about a lot of those stories. Oh. Uh, but oh, this one... <laughs> Uh, this one was, uh, he, he was just growing weed out on the island with his tripod bridge, you know, the tripods, Johnny tripod. <laughs> and apparently the feds showed up <laughs> to, like, search their community, and they busted a bunch of people, but uh, he just took down the log. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it did its job. And they couldn't get out to the island. Oh, that's so amazing. <laughs> Like, why bother? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. just leave this crazy guy. <laughs> <laughs> that he is was amazing. probably out there just like fully nude standing in the water. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Something like yeah. that. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I, I can't, I, I wish I knew what it was. Allison was listening to a song the other day. And I was doing I was doing some recording and I was like barely aware that she was sitting next to me. And she's like, oh. That song, it had the so called yeah in it. <laughs> I, I should now go back now that I'm not distracted by recording a song and ask her what song that was. I wonder if uh, it was, does she listen to a lot of rap? Because I can imagine that sound being used. I don't know. Maybe people don't know what the so called yeah is, but it's a very specific sound. And it's one that you make uh, as you're coming into camp. If you've left the campsite to go for a hike in the woods and you're coming back in, you want to announce yourself. And let people know that it's not a stranger or a ranger uh, <laughs> or the feds. You you come into the camp and you say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and also, uh, if we were going on a hike or something, so you didn't get too far away from the rest of the group, is you would go, yeah, and they would do it back. And you would know you're still in earshot. It sounds like we grew up as cowboys now. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Looping back to Steph <laughs> as we were trying to focus on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do have my own sort of uniquely so-called childhood memory, too, for me. Uh, or maybe uniquely. Tell, tell, uh, tell, tell. Yeah, I, I just feel like um, flights, of fanti flights of fancy are a common so-called trait. Absolutely. And, uh, I mean, that was that defined most of our dinner conversations and things. It's just like, what if this were true? It's kind of like the pointless conjecture. It's probably why you guys put it, yeah. put it in the show. I wonder. Yeah, very true. <laughs> But um, I think I took that maybe to another level uh, from what you guys might have done, uh, which was that uh, our other sibling and I spent like hours and hours playing with like these little plastic horses. And I would also play with like stuffed animals and things. They all had names. At one point we made like a, a photo album with pictures of all the plastic horses and their family relationships, their spouses. Wow religious inclinations that's amazing that's amazing <laughs> that's some serious world building oh yeah definitely did you write stories about them uh well i didn't but um uh my other sister uh, our other sister emma did write a couple of stories specifically for me starring all of those Aww, all personal of those fan fiction yeah yeah personal fan fiction about our own make-believe games <laughs> That is awesome. That's so nice. Yeah. And she is a talented was, writer. Yeah. This world had a name, right? I mean, I know what it is, but I'm going to make you say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So actually, the universe in which this world existed was called Mustakia. But the planet on which all the horses lived inexplicably was called Horstum. <laughs> Horstum. Horstum, <laughs> but yeah. it was the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Horstum was the planet in Mustakia, which was. The, I feel like yeah. you were just making your own version of My Little Pony. It's like My Little <laughs> Pony meets Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I, that's a perfect description. <laughs> My Little Pony meets Lord of the Rings. That's amazing. Because I remember, and this world had like a truly universal language because I remember you once showing me, excitedly showing me a list of vocabulary words in Mustakian. It was, you were creating the Mustakian language, which, if that's the universe, then it's literally a universal language. Yeah, I mean, they're at, like, Star Trek levels. I, I think um, before I'd ever seen Treasure Planet, uh, we decided that to get between worlds, um, this would be a difficult thing to describe without, like, a diagram or something, but um, all the worlds were suspended above, like, this massive ocean, and... Uh, 
So to get to another planet, you just had to go down to the planetary dock and get on a ship to go to the next planet over. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, and, and if this sounds like, I think probably a lot, of, a lot of people listening to that will say that sounds like a really intricate world to have been created for some plastic horses. Like for, they're imagining that you're probably like six or seven years old because you're playing with plastic oh, horses. No. <laughs> but that's the other thing that's like very uniquely Steph here is that you were doing this world building and playing with these toys and stuff like that. If you don't mind me saying, I, I think it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> until until much older than like a lot of kids would have I mean, been playing with. I hate to break it to you, but we do that like every couple weeks. We play D and D. But yeah, I'm actually still more obsessed with world building than actual storytelling. I'm I'm constantly mm -hmm. coming up with new new worlds. I'll draw maps and languages and histories and all kinds of stuff. I guess just like the optics of it, like a kid, like a 12 year old kid sitting there with a bunch of little plastic horses lined up on the ground, like arranged for battle. No, 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 no. You should be picturing a teenager. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was still, I was still doing this when I met Masha, which was yeah. when I was 16. Gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, that, and by that point I did know it was weird, but... <laughs> Oh, super cool, though. That was one of the many ways in which I've gotten cooler since meeting Masha. <laughs> so I stopped doing that. Yeah. Oh, whatever. I've gotten less cool. I play with kids' toys all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember, Steph, you also telling me that you used to commonly walk to the park and climb trees and just sit in the top of trees and think. And that's, yeah. I think that's yeah. a, that was probably a pretty unusual activity for a, a child of your young age to be sure. doing yeah i mean i've always been inclined toward walking and climbing things and we lived uh, in the middle of a city if this is not clear this is not like a city kid thing <laughs> but normally yeah i would walk barefoot over to the park and just climb i'm pretty sure i climbed every climbable tree there yeah and you walked like everywhere barefoot too yeah yeah that was another thing um but i i used to go on like long walks i would leave and come back like two hours later having walked to like a totally different part of the city wow, wow. man i feel like you know how we talked about this it always ends up being a dad story i think eventually they're going to be steph stories it's just that steph has not lived quite a long enough life to have accumulated the the <laughs> wealth of stories that dad did by the time <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i feel like i already have a few few fun stories but i uh, yeah i haven't done a lot of the things i want to do yet so no <laughs> now, there's some great sarah stories too though no <laughs> well maybe it was uh on one of these long walks that you came up with uh one of your poems that you're going to share with us oh yeah <laughs> yeah don't make me be the only voice representing poetry because i'm not <laughs> that good a poet <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I write poetry all the time. I'd like to think I've improved from this point. You've also been contributing to our sibling album that's coming out sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, this is a, this is gonna be a sneak preview for which I am writing copious amounts of poetry. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh, a few years ago, we played this game, which is another very Sokol experience, I think. Uh, we played a game and we called it Flash Poetry. Yes. And uh, I believe this was one of the results of Flash Poetry, uh, which basically is just someone comes up with a topic for a poem. Set a timer. Yeah, set a timer for like one or two minutes, something like that. And everyone just writes the best poem they can. And I know you keep mentioning how we don't want to talk about dad constantly in this socialism section. Uh, but this one is about something he used to say. A quote from... Uh, his dad, which was calling someone old time waster. I think that referred to like one of dad's friends, right? Yes. Yeah. Dad had a friend that was referred to as old time waster. Yeah. Dad's dad was mm. not, not the best dude in the world, uh, but he, he would always call dad's friend old time waster. And apparently that has always just stuck in your head, especially Nick, because uh, mm. that was the subject you gave for the poem. Oh. Old time oh, that's right. Yeah, that was yeah. The, the game. You had to give a, ti a title for the poem. 
And then we would, yeah, have a minute. That's right. Would you like to hear my old time waster poem? Yes. Yes. All right. The old man sat, spinning yarns to weave majestic patterns. He sat here, watching all our lives unfurl at his fingertips. But sometimes he lets a thread slip out the window or tumble on the floor. He threads the strings of time through needle eyes, camels and gnats alike, and all our lives caught up in the puppet strings of time, and he lets it waste away. Fade. Old time waster. Wow, cool. How do we do a little snapping applause? No, I That's love that. I, I love that I, I'm picturing like uh, yes. God as a puppet master, but it's like incredibly intricate with like billions of tiny fibers all <laughs> like controlling you know, with like controlled by extremely subtle movements. I um, instantly got a visual for a poem, but then dismissed it as too difficult. <laughs> oh, for like painting? Yeah, painting or visual? sorry, an oh. idea for a painting. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Steph. Yeah, of course. If if you if I um if I've earned the right to ever come back, uh, then I think I have better poetry I might be able to present. <laughs> you know, poetry that rhymes and stuff. Well, I you're gonna have I don't I don't know if you've earned your right to come back quite yet, but you're gonna. <laughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking, brother? I think I think we better let her try uh, her hand at pointless some pointless conjecture. Oh, I think you've never been more right about anything. <laughs> In your whole goddamn life. Pointless conjecture. So I think, should we let the guest go first or the guest go last? Do you want us to go first and give you... It's all right. So Sarah and I actually conspired earlier today to come up with a question for you. And then we figure you'll ask a, ask one of us as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's, it's a sort of a like you versus us kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Oh, very, very hostile. Yeah, and whoever wins buys the other person ice cream. <laughs> it's a very hostile environment we're creating in the studio. Brings the other person ice cream in the hospital where they're be from having their leg amputated because that's what's at stake here. Oh. Is it? <laughs> no, I mean, it's just kind of a friendly, you know, us versus you, loser gets their leg cut off kind of thing. You know, just one of those. It's like, have you seen any of the Saw movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a game like Saw. Yeah, you know? let's play a game. <laughs> uh, but seriously, it's up to you guys. Do you think that we should let the amateur go first in case it sucks and then you guys can be a palate cleanser? <laughs> Not no, for we're... that reason, but yeah, you can go first. <laughs> All right, so here's my scenario. I know you guys work together to create the question, and I only give one answer, so I assume this is the other way around. I'll get two answers. We can conspire together. We usually end up doing that anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, Sarah. Yeah, I'm like, I'll, I'll be like, Sarah, step step aside here for a second. Let's talk about this. And I'll be like, I don't understand you. You're, <laughs> You're like fake whispering. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm rubbing these pieces pieces of paper together over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see what there's to oh, misunderstand. I, are you a Slytherin now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> parcel tongue. Yeah, I was speaking parcel tongue. <laughs> All right, does that answer your question then, Steph? <laughs> 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 definitely yeah um, so the pointless conjecture that i've come up with is this and i have to set the stage a little you're sitting in your home slash apartment at night you're laying in bed you've gotten ready for bed you're reading a book or browsing through social media whatever the case may be and for whatever reason you are alone in the house and you are confident that you are alone in the house and uh, it's the middle of the night, and as you sit there, just scrolling on your phone or reading a book, you hear some clattering in your kitchen. And you hear a voice yell out, Where do you guys keep the peanut butter? So, what? <laughs> you don't know why this is happening, but you get up, you slowly creep out of bed, you poke your head around the corner to the kitchen, and there you see Bigfoot. And he's got jelly, two pieces of bread, and he's looking through your pantries to find peanut butter. So he can make a PBJ. And he calmly looks up at you. You know, he's like eight feet tall, so he's stooping under your ceiling. He calmly looks up at you and says, Oh, hey, uh, where do you guys keep your peanut butter? What do you do? <laughs> That's awesome. First of all, does he say it just like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, he has a totally normal voice. He just says, where do you guys keep the peanut butter? <laughs> I, I'm First of all, I'm going to, if this talk... If, 
if it's talking like that, I'm going to assume this is a human in a in a Sasquatch suit. Are, are, are there some are there elements to this that make it really obviously that this is like not oh, a yeah. fake? Is there a lingering smell of sulfur? No, the, there's no there's no um, obvious sign that this is fake in any way. Like it doesn't look like a cheap costume. It just looks like an extremely hairy, tall, large footed individual. Yeah, maybe there's 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 some kind of like fidelity to that that would never be included in like a cheap costume. Like maybe it's got skin tags and like still some pine needles hanging off its fur and like stuff you wouldn't put on a costume. Yeah, yeah. I mean you may, you know, assume whatever you want. This is your answer. But it looks very much like a real Bigfoot. Regardless, in the moment, you're just reacting. You're there. Like for me, I'm a single woman. I live alone. I there's a huge hairy creature asking for peanut butter. I feel like I'm calling the cops and I'm getting outside my apartment as quickly as possible in reality. But I feel like <laughs> okay. I would also guide him to the peanut butter. I would be like, or sorry, guide them to the peanut butter. And I would be like... Top shelf on the right! I would be like, I keep it in the fridge. I'm weird. I'm sorry. It's going to be hard. You're just going to need to chisel it out of there or stick it in the microwave for a second. Okay? I'm going to go outside and there's going to be police. If you mean no harm, just say that. And then. <laughs> Wait, don't stick it in the microwave because the lid's made out of metal. It's going to spark. Yeah, actually, don't stick the whole thing in the microwave. Just take a little bit out. And you know what? Just saw the. You know what? Just. Jesus oh, Christ. I'll just do it. it for you. Yeah, I'll just get it for you. <laughs> I'll just make you the same. What about? Are you Nick? I have a very vivid imagination. I'm imagining myself in this scenario, like because I because I've been in the scenario where I've been in the house all by myself, and suddenly felt that I heard an extremely strange noise, like that for some reason my imagination amplifies some house noise, and it's like I, I freeze. You get that like fight or flight reflex. My hair stands up on and uh, and yeah, and I and I just freeze. So now I can, and I can conjure that feeling sort of tone in my mind really easily. So I'm imagining walking into the room and seeing Sasquatch standing there with making a PB and J and I'm imagining myself just, it's so easy to imagine myself just freezing and like my mind is racing with thoughts like, am I having a hallucination? Have I gone crazy? Am I dreaming right now? Is this a nightmare? Like... Those are all the first things that occur to me. Like, I'm just terrified, frozen, and thinking that I'm that I'm not in reality anymore somehow. <laughs> now, what if you happen to be tripping on LSD and then this happened to you? Well, then I think the safest thing to do would be to go interact with it. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> See if I could merge with it or something like that. It would Experience feel like the safest thing. Through the eyes of the Sasquatch. Ah, yeah, that would be sweet. <laughs> Yeah, so basically you're just in a Venom scenario at this point. I don't know if you guys watched that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I have not. Oh, a parasite takes over a guy's body. I have a friend who has a crush on that person. <laughs> the parasite? Sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that person. <laughs> no, the main character. Well, I imagine if I stare at Sasquatch long enough in frozen shock and he, like, continues to show no threat and eventually just kind of, like sighs exasperated me like oh, look i just need a sandwich okay god is it is it too much to ask to get some peanut butter like if the conversation continues in a way that's disarming like that you know i could warm up to it and probably would just ask ask it some con uh, some cautious questions are you gonna leave once i get you peanut butter like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. for sure, man, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was gonna make it like a choose your own adventure thing. Yeah. <laughs> where you oh. guys are like, I'd run out and call the cops. You run out and call the cops. Well, here's what happens if you do that. Oh no. <laughs> you missed a choose your own adventure. <laughs> uh that's gonna be a really depressing choose your own adventure, because I know Sasquatch dies in every single one, especially if it's like friendly, peaceful Sasquatch. The only scenario in which Sasquatch doesn't die is the one in which you get him peanut butter. <laughs> oh, and you don't call the cops. Like, you get. Yeah. <laughs> if you just let Sasquatch in, let him eat your food, hope to God you have a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> and if he stays, then that's just where he lives now. <laughs> <laughs> the last line of the story is 
Man, Sasquatch really does make the best peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. It's a very heartwarming tale. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys do this, but I personally uh, think, think I would... Um, I've developed a worldview that can pretty much accept any sort of crazy anomaly. I would just say... Yeah, peanut butter is top shelf on the right. Um, what are you doing in my kitchen? <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's nice. I feel like you're able to get there because you've thought about this specific scenario. Like, <laughs> in real life, a really, really fucking weird thing is possible. Fucking weird things happen to people all the time. Things that seem inexplicable. Um, and it's not going to be the thing that you prepare for or that you expect. <laughs> unless you're really, really lucky. It's going to be something else, like totally disarming and i i don't know what it's gonna be because if anything that i say is gonna seem unlikely but you know what i'm saying i do know what you're saying yeah i feel like steph can can roll with any punch you know including the question we're gonna trip her up with today yeah <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll demonstrate my ability to roll with anything i'll just yes and you <laughs> <laughs> all right the question is that you read it because i don't have my phone with me <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I, I I don't have it written down, but the question. Oh my god! But the 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 question that we have for you today is that let's say you are given the ability to resurrect one historical figure. Uh, you know you like history, so you know resurrect just, and clone. I'm throwing you a bone here. Yeah, it's, it's not just that you can resurrect a historical figure. Now you get to clone them as many times as you like, just one person. But you get a lot of them, and you get an army of this historical <laughs> character. And what do you and, and what do you use this army for? <laughs> Not the question of would you do it. You've done it. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> oh man. Um. So historical means dead, right? Yeah. Um. We're someone who's currently making history. I would say. <laughs> okay. Um. I'm gonna say I'll take. Ooh, it kind of depends on what I want to do with my army of this person. That's the question. Can I just do like 10 billion of someone and completely dominate the rest of the world? Uh, you can do whatever you want, but... <laughs> no, I don't think I'll do that. Yeah, you could do like 50 Jeff Bezos and just like create a crazy world economy. <laughs> I, that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> That's like a lot of revenue to add to the economy all at once. <laughs> no, I think I would probably do... Oh, man, this is tough. Um, the, the person I'd most like to meet is Octavian, or Augustus Caesar, the first oh. official emperor of Rome. That would be a lot of he... gods to have in the world. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it, his existence now doesn't make the gods he believed in real. <laughs> no, he, what, what, I thought the Caesars were gods. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's why he was called Augustus, right? Yeah, yeah, because he was August. Yeah, so if you made an army of them, there'd be a lot of gods to be alive at one time. I don't think he was actually a god. <laughs> I know, I just said from his perspective. <laughs> sure. I'm worried about what he would think about a lot of other gods being around. Anyway, I'm sorry, never mind. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> I don't know, he seemed really smart and wise, so I would just, like, develop a whole political party of Augustus Caesar. Yeah, he would just agree with himself and see the value in taking care of himself. <laughs> and then slowly seize control of the United States in the background. <laughs> Interesting. Declare himself president for life, but maintain the power of Congress. <laughs> We'll call it Augusto Socialism. <laughs> Augusto Socialism. Augusticism. Well, he was he was a little Augustus. bit of a, a socialist and a pacifist. There was no war during his reign. He was a really interesting kidding, really. dude. Huh. Yeah, it was called the Pax Romana. Cool answer. I I just have one suggestion though, uh, okay. for if you ever have to answer this question again. Um, so you are a student of psychology. So I feel like there might be some really interesting perhaps ethically dubious research opportunities here in this like uh <laughs> ethically dubious but potentially with amazing outcomes so take a name a brilliant person from history uh i mean it could be einstein or anaximander anax i don't know who that is i'll go with a different name <laughs> it's a greek philosopher he figured out where planets were and things like that 
Oh, cool. Okay, I'll just say, uh, how about Richard Feynman? Okay, take Richard Feynman. Now, you're, you're taking historical figures, so you can clone them at whatever age you want to, right? Or there's no specification there. So sure. you could clone a bunch, an army of, you get like, you know, 30,000 baby Richard Feynmans. And you, and you put them in different environments. So you've got this baby with this brilliant DNA. And you put that baby in a bunch of different environments, different types of households, religious, non-religious, poor, wealthy, and like multiples of each version of this. And you do research on how Richard Feynman turns out in different <laughs> atmospheres. That still seems like a hard thing to pull off. You know, because you have to get the Feynmans into houses and control I mean, you them. You have to place the Feynmans. <laughs> <laughs> you have the ability to control, to control, uh, to create cloned life of Richard That's Feynman. That's true. I feel like nothing is going to be yeah, too I'll much be, of a I'll challenge I'll be unbelievably you. wealthy, so I'll just start like a rewards program for adopt a yeah. fine one. He'll, you should do seven of them in like a super um a, like a superhero academy like the umbrella academy <laughs> yeah so maybe like some of the Feynmans are raised in an environment where like his artistic side is cultivated and some are raised in an environment where his you know stem mathematics side are kind of encouraged and cultivated and some are raised in like an environment of nothing and he's has like all these obstacles he has to overcome and does like does that create a smarter Feynman? that sounds so ridiculously cruel <laughs> I, I mean I, it's kind of how i feel like god is if there's a god just a researcher <laughs> creating all these weird terrible situations to see how people react <laughs> oh gosh yeah <laughs> Must be. Yeah. Because you know how God doesn't know anything about you, so he has to observe your behavior to learn about your psychology? You mean he's like a trick psychic? <laughs> like a fake psychic, like Sean Spencer? Sean Spencer and his partner, Bruton Gaster. Yep, exactly. I don't know either of those people. Uh, it's a reference no well, one's going to get. <laughs> it's because oh, you really? suck. It's from Psych, the show. <laughs> anyway, I... <I'm... laughs> Well, I think that's all we have today. Any any last thoughts from any of my siblings on the news from La La Land? Any questions for the audience other than about their favorite porn? Yes, audience. We want your porn preferences. <laughs> Stop it. I, I, I have one last thing to say. Which is that? Given the opportunity to say something at the end of a podcast, <laughs> what I would say... In this situation that I find myself in now, or in any such situation in which I would hypothetically find myself. So, Sarah, do you have any comments that you wanted to make at the end of the episode here? I'm still, I haven't gotten to the, what the crux of what I would say is. That, the, the, the meat at the heart of it, at the, at the very, the kernel in the core of what I'm saying. There's just okay. nothing there. Sorry. <laughs> You killed the punchline. Now I have to start over. <laughs> no. <laughs> we can't include that. <laughs> Steph made a gay joke right as I was talking about <laughs> discovering that the thing you were searching for was what you had all along. And that was nothing? <laughs> I don't I, I don't make the wisdom, I just channel it, alright? That's not <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm really glad we had a detour for that. So this has been the news from La La Land, uh, where... All your dreams come true. <laughs> and the Feynmans overcome ob obstacles. And if I would clone anyone, it would be you. If you are enjoying this show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, or simply email us at voiceofsocal at gmail.com. We would love to hear your feedback. The theme music for this podcast was written and recorded by Nick and Sarah Sokol, and the music you are hearing right now was performed by the band Nuage on their album, Nuff, available on iTunes and Spotify. The News from La La Land is a production of Voice of Sokol. To learn more about the Sokols and their creative content, head to Voice of Sokol.